Sure. So Fisher was the first case that we got deeply involved working with EJS on uh, implicit bias situation. And we were contacted by EJS, I'm the chair of the pro bono committee, we were contacted through uh, Eva to see if we wanted to help on this brief. Uh, implicit bias is an issue that we have been looking at and, and is a critical issue, obviously, today in today's world. Uh, and it was really an exciting opportunity to work with EJS and the social scientists and the coalition they were putting together to get involved in the Fisher case on an issue that we thought was critical. Together, I think a very great team. We really had a very interesting experience writing a brief that I don't think the uh, the issues we covered were covered by anybody else in the Supreme Court. So Fisher, of course, arose in the context of university admissions, and one of the issues, uh, the primary issue in Fisher, was the benefit of having a diverse undergraduate admissions program, so that you get a broad diversity within schools. Uh, and one of the things we tried to show in Fisher was the benefits to students and society by having um, a broad diversity of students in the class. Um, Mount Holly was a little bit different. Mount Holly really reached the uh, implicit bias in the Fair Housing Administration Act. And what Mount Holly raised was the question of whether when you really needed to prove uh, racial uh, discriminatory intent under the Fair Housing Act. Now, all of the uh, appellate courts that have looked at the issue, as well as the um, uh, federal government on uh, the housing uh, rules, have said you don't need to show actual discriminatory intent. But the Supreme Court, under this Mount Holly, was the second time the Supreme Court decided to take up the issue as to whether or not uh, actual discriminatory intent was required to be shown under uh, these rules. And I think the thinking among many in the legal community was that the Supreme Court chose this case um, so that it could find that you needed to show discriminatory intent and disparate impact was not sufficient. Um, again, given our past relationship with EJS and our views on the issue, um, we thought this was an important issue that needed to be addressed. We look forward to working um, with EJS, and I think we worked very well together. Uh, this brief, again, combined the work of numerous social scientists and the importance of um, the implicit bias and how that plays a role in everyday life. So the firm has a commitment, has taken up the ABA challenge. Uh, we allow everybody, we indeed we encourage everybody to do pro bono work. Uh, partners and associates alike, the time for uh, associates do on pro bono work is, is counted the same as billable work. And we work uh, and very strongly encourage people to take an active participation on pro bono uh, or community organizations. Uh, we've done that since our founding. John Wilson, the founder of the firm, uh, was actively engaged in civic work. Uh, Larry Sonsini, who's now the chairman of the firm, strongly encourages all the attorneys and all the staff to get involved in our uh, communities and societies. So I, I actually think everyone from Larry is chairman of the firm to even, you know, uh, staff people to come take an active role in pro bono and public service activities in the community. We think it's critical um, and we feel very much a part of and very fortunate to be in the communities that we exist in. The relationship really started between Harry and Eva. And what I'm seeing now is the relationship go to the next generation. And that is a great joy, right? That's how you establish institutional relationships between institutions that are really critical to addressing um, important justice issues. And that's more than any one individual. Carrying it to the next generation is, to me, a, a great thing to see. Okay. Well, one of the things that we try and do with pro bono is to reach out to organizations like EJS. And one of the great benefits of being at a great firm like this, and you're not unique, uh, there's many, many great firms here, but we have the ability to take on and to work with EJS or organizations like yours to help as teammates and bring these important and critical causes. It can only happen if you guys take the lead. And EJS, by continually really um, 
being out there and and really fighting the good fight day in and day out is is really I think a uh, a trendsetter, a, an organization that, that we we're very proud to be associated with. And you know personally, being associated with Eva is always remarkable. But what you guys are doing is just you know fighting that fight is just really great, and we're so proud to be part of you and to be involved with you. Thank you for that.